have been doing is that the 60 people that push yes no buttons in this building are way behind the curve. These school districts are way ahead of us in maximizing their budgets to reach kids and effectively educate our Alaskan kids. I was just so proud of those two school districts. I don't have any immediate plans in terms of education legislation. I just say bravo to what our school districts are doing. James. James Brooks again from the Juno Empire. For Senate Finance, what's the schedule looking like on hearing not non-budgetary bills, things like the Uber bill, which I see is on there for Monday and Wednesday, but what about other things? Are you going to focus entirely on budget or try and mix things in? Or uh, uh, James, thanks for the question. We're trying to mix things in. We're, uh, our budget subcommittees have started. I'll let um, Senator Hoffman speak to that. So we're trying to get the, the items that are reaching us quickly up for hearings and out if they have positive uh, fiscal impacts for the state of Alaska. Senator Hoffman? Well, we, as you can see from the schedule on Thursday and Friday, we're starting to hear um, overviews uh, from some of the bigger departments that we had identified, um, and it's our intent to have hearings on uh, the DOT budget, education, the university, and HES, which have been uh, our, the four largest departments. but. Working with um, with the other body and uh, the members of our committee, we're trying to work as closely with them as possible so that once the House passes the budget, and in talking with uh, Representative Seaton, he believes that he can be very close to last year's uh, time frame within four days, uh, which could potentially get the bill out by the 45th to the 50th day by, through both bodies. Which, which again is very aggressive, but I've said uh, uh, more than once that this year it isn't about the budget. We need to work on the budget and get it behind us because in five or ten years, when people look back at the first session of the 30th Alaska Legislature, they're not going to want to know what we did with the operating budget. They're going to want to know what we did to fi fix the fiscal uh, gap that we have. So trying to get through the, the budget because it is a fiduciary responsibility to get that done, um, but give us as much time as possible to concentrate on what all Alaskans are most concerned about, and that is uh, uh, having a sustainable budget. Becky? For Senator Coghill, um, the two crime bills um, came out on Friday, um, and during the last news conference, you mentioned three core areas that that um, substantive bill would focus on. Um, I think that was SB 54 is the bill. Right. Um, and there are more than three areas that are focused on. So I was hoping um, is it was the intent to, um, to incorporate um, m many more of the commission's recommendations in that bill? Thank you, Becky. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the, uh, so we got uh, two bills. One is going to be a technical bill. And one is going to be, uh, and I say technical, there were places uh, where we asked uh, uh, agencies to do things that we found out they're just not going to do. For example, uh, there are laws that prohibit uh, notification uh, of, uh, of certain, certain sex offenses. They're, they don't even get the probation, and we required that they get notice of probation. Things like that where just how to make it work properly are going to take place. So even though uh, it's not exactly like a reviser's bill in that there's uh, 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 some actual policy movement, it's actually how to make work what we set out to do. So I think you're going to see that mostly technical. The other uh, one deals with uh, the three core areas, which are uh, the uh, violations of conditions of release. Uh, we found out that uh, uh, the accountability needed uh, to ramp up uh, a criminal charge in order to get them before a judge. I don't know that that was needed, but it was pretty clear that there was a miscommunication on how that was going to work. So this is a, a solution to that that I think is appropriate. And the C felony issue was the other big issue, uh, the jail time for C felony. Uh, and then uh, one of the issues that I think uh, people are just so wearied by and we're going to address, and that is thievery at the lower level. Uh, uh, seemed to not have any consequence and people were emboldened to steal. 
uh, this will ramp that uh, penalty up to where there's a criminal charge uh, that gets steeper and steeper on each subsequent deal. The other thing is the municipalities, uh, when we went to uh, uh, certain areas where we said a citation had to be the same as the state's, there were some citations where the state doesn't do like traffic fines and things like that within the city that they felt uh, that it was a, a barrier to them. So uh, we'll be dealing with those things. And there's probably about 10 other issues that are uh, probably of a whole lot less consequence, and, and that is uh, uh, some of the recommendations you'll see almost technical in nature where uh, the, the requirements of the court uh, didn't line up with what the, the police were seeing. So uh, I would encourage people to read the recommendations. So what you'll get this week is a rollout of the, the technical changes on how do we make it work uh, in the, the first bill, and then Friday we'll start going through the substance. Uh, you'll probably see a CS come because over the weekend I noticed some places where it didn't line up uh, uh, appropriate, so we'll have a CS probably brought before the committee on Friday for the substantive one. There was a couple other drafting issues that I think uh, I'm working back and forth with our drafters. Uh, and then one last comment on what's going up to the uh, Finance Committee. Um, I also uh, uh, work on the uh, State Affairs Committee and we're dealing with three issues dealing with the permanent fund. And I know that the chairman there has reached out to get as much public comment as he can so that when it gets up to the Finance Committee, uh, people have been uh, uh, engaged in that conversation at a, at a broader level. Because once it gets been to finance, then it's comparing probably uh, at a very different approach. And I just didn't want to think that the Finance Committee uh, can't even look at those bills until they're delivered out of this committee up to them. And, and that's part of the process. And so we're in 30 days into the session. And uh, between the resources, the, between the State Affairs, and even the Education Committee, uh, there are things yet, even in, in drafting yet, that will find their way to finance in the process of getting the budget fixed so, uh, or, re, or uh, kind of corralled. So. Anyway, this week uh, we'll line up those two bills. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, my staff will be lining them out. Uh, and so any prep work you need on uh, substantive questions, I'd be open to them. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. It's Liz in Austin. Liz? Uh, for the co-chairs of finance, uh, the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation is going to be presenting tomorrow. What are you interested in hearing from them? Good question. <laughs> I'd like to know what's going on with the project from a financial perspective. It's Senate Finance, so I'd like them to account for the money that they've used, where they've invested it. I'd like to know a little bit more details about uh, a new office in Houston. I didn't think that the answers in Senator Giesel's uh, Committee at Resources were adequate. Uh, as I was told, uh, uh, Mr. Meyer, uh, had the answers he just couldn't get through because he was out of state so uh, he has had some internal conversations with me so we're not going to try to surprise anybody they have the questions and they know what we want so we're trying to understand what they need of a hundred million dollars uh, left in reserve accounts now and just how this new project is going forward some interesting uh, things have come up over the weekend with uh, AGPA uh, or at least some variation of AGPA coming before us so that's interesting and we'll see uh, if uh, we can connect the dots for the people of Alaska to understand how we're spending money. Austin? Senator Coghill on uh, criminal justice reform. What's your level of concern that in this renewed discussion and revisiting of uh, SB 91, that there's going to be a shift away from data-driven decisions as the commission was calling for and back in the direction of just emotionally based decisions that might not have much to do with facts? Thanks, Austin, for that question. Uh, so the commission has been data-driven, and we greatly appreciate that. We've uh, looked all over the United States uh, looking for how we could implement a better public safety, uh, reduce recidivism, and hold people accountable. Uh, but what we heard throughout the summer uh, was frustration from the public and the police and the prosecutors. Uh, those are real concerns. and. I think what we're trying to do is find out how uh, that, that kind of input to the legislature uh, can be taken into account. So public condemnation uh, and uh, methodologies uh, that police felt uh, just didn't give them the tools to actually hold people accountable uh, and even getting them into programs, which is one of the aims of uh, the uh, criminal justice reform, 
uh, just needed to be modified. So it's not throwing out uh, the work that the Commission has done, it's just recognizing that the how it works at the ground level uh, needs to be addressed and the public safety concerns just had to be addressed. So public condemnation and process uh, came to us uh, throughout the summer actually and it got louder and louder certainly during the, the election season. But as we came in and we began to look at what was uh, uh, kind of the political noise and what were the practical problems, the practical problems became pretty real once the commission was able to deliberate amongst their uh, you know, stakeholders pretty broadly uh, used. And, uh, and I certainly heard them. And so now we're going to let the uh, committee uh, hear from both the police, uh, from the prosecutors, the Department of Law, and the public on uh, if this will bring some satisfaction to that accountability. Uh, but we're going to stay as close as we can to the data driving, I think. Uh, stay as close as we can, recognizing that public input also has its real value. And Nat, real quick, last question. Thanks. Nat, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm kind of watching, um, this is for anyone who feels comfortable fielding it. Um, you know, the Senate and the House seem to be, the Senate and the House majority seem to be moving in different directions on sort of key priorities of each chamber. You know, the House has the income tax, uh, oil tax legislation. The Senate has um, maybe steeper uh, spending cuts and the spending limit. Um, and I'm just curious, I mean, do you guys, are you guys worried about sort of moving in divergent directions and not having conversations about areas where you have differences of philosophies till the very end? Or are you guys already talking about how you're going to sort those out at the leadership level? Well, well, you know, the House, um, the House is relatively uh, new in th their structure in the Senate. Um, has uh, members that uh, have been around for a long time. You know, just at this table, we have over uh, probably 50 years of experience. And uh, we have been communicating, I have been communicating with uh, the speaker and, uh, and uh, the co-chairman of finance on the operating budget. The, the one big issue that is before us, I think, is, uh, is the uh, rewrite of the dividend, uh, which, if gets accomplished, will be a, a major, major accomplishment. Um, the House, um, although they are um, relatively new, I think they're committed uh, to addressing the overall uh, financial problem that's facing the state. Um, from my viewpoint, it's better to get more focused and uh, get what can get accomplished and then move on to the next thing that you might see to address the, the deficit. So overall, I think uh, both bodies are committed to doing something, at least on the dividend, um, which is the, the major issue, whether we get uh, other issues uh, resolved. Uh, remains to be seen. Um, we still have the operating budget, which requires a three-quarters vote. That was very, very difficult to accomplish last year, um, and I don't see why that is going to change, um, but hopefully we can address that at a, at a later time. Allowing time, like I said, to get the budget done and concentrate on, uh, on the, the other bigger issues so that we do have that dialogue, I think, is critical. Um, what do you think the chance uh, Nat, that, that's it. We're at 9 o'clock, so we need to go. Thank you so much for attending today. We're adjourned.